I said today I will show you uh, something about CAD tools for field capo computing, and I will start with the description of uh, what I've done during my PhD and what the group where I worked uh, uh, have done during the years. And finally, I will show a live demo of uh, the what is possible with the tool that I will show you in a few seconds. So uh, let's start with the advertisement. Uh, the Topolinano framework is what I'm going to talk and uh, talk about, and is a, a cross-platform CAD software for field CAD for nanocomputing technologies. Uh, it, it was developed uh, at the VLSI lab in Polytechnic in Torino, and uh, can be freely downloaded uh, from the website uh, that you can see uh, here. And so everybody can download the tool and uh, start to work with uh, uh, FCM technologies. Uh, before going to the tool, I need to uh, just have a brief introduction on the supported technologies and what I mean with the uh, field cap or nanocomputing technologies. So you probably know CMOS technologies and uh, all the capacitance that need to be charged uh, in order to uh, propagate the information, the, all the logic gates and so on. We are speaking of uh, digital electronics. Uh, but um, we are, we work with the field couple nanocomputing. That is a completely new uh, set of technologies where the information propagation is due to field interactions among the different elements. So we are speaking of electric fields or magnetic fields and no current flows among the devices. Uh, we, there are mainly uh, two uh, important things about FCN. It is the fact that the power consumption is mainly due to the clock mechanism we use inside these technologies and not due to the switching. And so we are in front of, a, we can say that we don't have a static power consumption. And the cells that uh, compose the technology uh, are uh, non-volatile. So we have this, uh, very good advantages in these technologies. But I show you a few examples. So the first one is INML, that stands for in-plane nanomagnetic logic. Here uh, you see, for example, the basic blocks that are these, uh, uh, these models here that uh, are nanomagnets. We are in front of uh, magnets with the size of uh, roughly 60 by 90 nanometers. And uh, you see the green arrow in the center. That is uh, the representation of the magnetization vector of these small nanomagnets. And due to their dimension, the stable magnetization, the, the magnetization vector is stable only when oriented along the long axis and is unstable when it's oriented along the short axis. So we encode the binary information inside the magnetization direction. And we can uh, propagate the logic uh, by placing magnets one near the other. Uh, here on the right, you see uh, an example of uh, what I was talking about, the clock mechanism. So we have uh, a wire uh, below the magnet plane. And uh, with the current flow inside the wire, we can force the magnet uh, in the unstable state. And when we will release the the current, we will uh, stop the current, the magnets will propagate the information. Uh, finally, here in the bottom part of the slide, you see the basic blocks of the INML technologies, uh, majority voter, that is the basic uh, logic gate, and also we can have OR and then gates uh, and other components that will be clearly explained during the, the demo. Another technology, uh, always magnetic technology is uh, this one, a perpendicular nanomagnetic logic. Also here we are looking at nanomagnets, but the magnetization direction is perpendicular with respect to the magnet's plane. So you see that it's going, uh, it's going from down to upwards and not like before it was laying on in the magnet. Uh, here you see again an example of a majority voter and uh, what, how the coupling among the magnetic field of the magnets happens. In this part of the slides, I try to show uh, how the interaction among the external fields will uh, force the new magnetization 
inside the magnets, but uh, I don't want to bore you with uh, this uh, physical implementation here, uh, but I will focus on the tools and that is what is important today. So here is an overview of the framework. Uh, as I mm, told before, it's a complete framework that is composed by two different tools. Uh, one is uh, Topolinano itself, and the other one is Marcad. I will go through the two tools uh, very soon, but I want to highlight the fact that the tools can interchange uh, information. So it's possible to perform a layout with uh, one tool and then uh, load it inside the other tool and vice versa. So this is uh, uh, very, very important and will be clearly exploited during the live demo. Uh, let's start with uh, Marcad. The idea of MacCAD is uh, the, the one to have the possibility to perform custom circuit design in a very easy way. So the user can design his own uh, circuit simply placing uh, technological elements inside the drawing area. So the user can drag and drop the, uh, let's say the models of the technological element inside the drawing area and design its own circuit. Then it's possible to extract a netlist, a VHDL netlist of uh, the circuit that can be simulated using, for example, model sim. So the user can design a circuit and then simulate uh, the behavior of, uh, of the circuit. Topolinano, on the contrary, is a physical design tool. So the idea is uh, to start from a, a post-synthesis uh, VHDL netlist. So for example, you have designed your uh, your architecture, you use, uh, for example, Synopsys uh, to perform the synthesis and you map the circuit on a, a device library compatible with the Polynano. Then you provide the netlist uh, uh, obtained in this way to the tool that uh, can parse this netlist and then use a physical design engine uh, with a place and route engine inside that can perform the physical layout of, the, of your circuit. Also here it's possible to perform simulation and uh, it's possible to perform a simulation inside the tool. So the, you can provide a VHDL test bench to, to give the stimuli to the circuit. And uh, so you have both the circuit layouts and the waveforms of, um, of your circuit. Now this could be not very clear, but uh, I hope that in the next minutes, I, I will, you will get something more with the live demo that I'm going to show. Okay, let's start this time with uh, Topolinano. So you should see the, the screen. Um, this is the main uh, window of Topolinano. So we can uh, identify different portion. Here on the left, you can see that we have all the inputs, the VHDL inputs and test bench that I can use during, uh, during the usage of the tool. Uh, on the right, you have the so-called components that will be described later. And in the bottom part, you have the log messages of the tool. In the central portion, for example, if I open a VHDL file, you can see the VHDL description of the ripple carry adder that I open. But let's see what happens uh, when I want to perform um, a layout. So uh, let's use this uh, component. I select. Uh, to use the RCA 4-bit uh, uh, circuit. I compile the circuit and you can see here that uh, all the uh, files in the hierarchy have been compiled and uh, read by the tool. And then I can perform the layout. When we want to perform a layout, as uh, you probably know, it's possible to define a lot of parameters. So for example, here we have a different uh, optimization algorithm here. Uh, let's use the barycenter um, algorithm. It is uh, very powerful. But uh, in the in this section of the of the window, you see a lot of different parameters that can be changed. Obviously, uh, during the early stage of a technology, it's important to understand how the this parameter will impact the the technology circuit. It's also possible to design to select the approach for your design. So you can go for a flat layout where all the hierarchy is flattened to only the basic gates or use a hierarchical approach. Here you see this uh, small check and uh, leaving it uh, checked, it's possible to load the uh, components in the hierarchy 
uh, from the disk, so from the one present here, and this will uh, speed up uh, really, uh, will really speed up the design. So for example, I will go, and here you see that in uh, 78 milliseconds, we have our uh, circuit, so the LCA4 bit, and you see, I will zoom a little bit, you see all the nanomagnets that I showed before, for example, we are making the wire, and the two very big blocks that are the components that uh, the tool was able to load from the library. And I can open the tool and go inside, and for example, see how the LCA2 bit was uh, done, and go uh, to the end, to the bottom of the hierarchy, and see the basic block, the full adder, here displayed. Now I will show you a simulation. I will close all these uh, window. I will perform the ripple carry with only two bits. Uh, select again the same uh, um, algorithm, perform the layout. And this time I will provide the test bench that you can see is composed. We, I here this a for loop in order to provide all the stimuli. Uh, I can now go for the simulation. I can set up all the parameters for the clock uh, signal. Uh, you remember the copper wire and uh, so the frequency of the signal applied to the wire. And here you see the simulation. So everything was done in less than a second inside the tool. This is a logical simulation. So there, are, there is a, a model of the technological elements of the magnets and the interaction is uh, uh, solved. And you can see here that it's possible to, to inspect the simulation and to understand the value of the different signal inside the simulation. It's possible to zoom inside the simulation and to expand the timeline in order to check particular condition for the input and the outputs. Uh, okay, uh, one last thing about uh, Topolinano, as I said, it's possible to change, exchange information among the two, the tools. So I will now perform uh, the layout of the, the full adder. This is smaller. And, and this time I will save the layout on the disk. I have already one, but it will overwrite the previous one. And now I can uh, switch to MacCAD, just take the, the file that I've just exported, drag and drop here, and you see that I can open it inside the tool, very easy. And for example, imagine that I don't want to see this staircase here, I don't like it. And here in MacAD is different because I, as I said before, it's a, a custom circuit design. So I can, for example, say, oh, I don't want this magnet and also this one. And I want this wire to be connected here and the same for this staircase. Uh, I don't want this. So I will remove this, select all the wire place here. Uh, and now I like the circuit, so I want to save. I can go back to Topolinano, close the previous one, and press import. Uh, go in the results folder and select the full adder file. And here you see that is the same file that I saved from MACAD. And I can again perform the simulation inside the Topolinano in order to verify what I've done. And you see that is again uh, a simulation correctly performed, the clock signals, the input, and so on. So this was, uh, let's say, complete usage of uh, the Topolinano tool. And I will move again uh, to MACAD and show you something different with another technology. So for example, it can create a new layout. Uh, so an empty one. This time I will use uh, perpendicular nanomagnetic logic. You see that it's also the possibility to use molecular uh, devices, but let's stay with the magnetic. So here you see uh, an empty uh, drawing area with nothing. I will start to draw my circuit, placing the building blocks that you can see here inside the drawing area. So for example, we start with uh, these uh, elements that uh, I can call uh, nucleation center that are magnets uh, with, that can uh, change their magnetization based on the input uh, uh, of the neighboring magnets. It's not true for the, for example, the wires that are these uh, blocks that I'm placing here. I will then place the paths. The paths are used to 
surround a nucleation center in order to uh, give the input. And you see that I can rotate the, all the elements inside the window, place corner interconnection here in order to connect the input nucleation center to the pulse. And finally, a final nucleation center here with a, a final pad. Here I designed a so-called majority voter. So you see uh, this is the normal structure. But now I have to define, I can define also the input. So for example, I decide to place an input here that I will name uh, A, the same with, uh, uh, let's say, B and C. I can do something like that. And I will select a name for an output pin that we place at the output. So imagine that I've designed this circuit. I want to test it and to see if it's working. I can export uh, my uh, circuit as a component, first of all. It asks me to save. Uh, I will overwrite the previous version. And now I, have, I can select where to place inside the components library my layout if I want to use that again later layouts, and I will leave the check to export VHDL in order to have the net list of the circuit. I will press export here, he asked me for uh, everything, and I want to uh, focus a little bit on this window. Uh, this window is uh, where you can change again the parameter of the technology. So also here it's possible to change the values for the uh, clock uh, intensity, from the dimension of the elements and all the other possible values for the technology that we are using. We'll press OK. It will say that uh, everything goes well. Uh, in case of error, I will receive a different message. And I will show you uh, the resulting DHDL. Here you see, for example, you see that uh, the entity name is uh, MVGate, the name that I used. and uh, all the elements inside the circuit are uh, translated into uh, a component inside the VHDL. In order to perform the simulation, I will move to uh, this screen. Here you see uh, the test bench that I will use uh, with all the input applied here, for example, the input for the values for A, B, and C. And I will use modelsim that probably you know. Here you see uh, that I've already performed the compilation and uh, starting the simulation. I show you the waveform here, perform a 50 microseconds uh, simulation. And here you see the waveform obtained with the model sim simulation. So also here it's possible to verify there's uh, the clock signal or the input combination. And we can see how the output changes, changing the input. An important thing is that uh, you can see that we have the delay, for example, here from the input change to the output. And this is uh, uh, important because the simulation that is performed by ModelSim is not just a logical simulation, but we have uh, uh, models of the technological element embedded inside the VHDL uh, uh, files, and they are solved during the simulation. I just want to show you one more thing. That is, uh, for example, I want to show you uh, a circuit uh, designed by hand with a marker. Here you see a carry select adder uh, with a ripple carry two bit here and the final MOOCs in order to select the correct value based on the carry output of the first one. And here you can see the hierarchy, first of all, and the uh, use of the second layer because uh, an important thing of uh, perpendicular magnetic logic is the possibility to stack layer of magnets one, near, one above the other in order to have uh, really 3D circuits. So each color is uh, a layer and the, the, I can, for example, obs obscure the first layer and you see that, the, for example, the ripple carrier is expanding above two layers. And also here I can click and open and see how it's done inside and I can go to the bottom of the hierarchy also here. I think that I can stop here with uh, the demo. I hope you like it. And I want to just show one last thing uh, here. Uh, I want to thank you and uh, I want to 
tell you that all what you have seen was uh, developed by students, um, students during their master thesis or PhD students. So in case uh, if you want to work on that and to uh, work on the development of CAD tools and for emerging technologies and if you want to learn how to uh, perform the automatic layout of circuits based on completely new paradigm or something like that, uh, feel free to write me an email. You see the address over there and there's a lot of work that can be done and the tool is very the tools are very big and very complex, but uh, we are, there's always room for improvement because we want to get to the point to be comparable with, uh, let's say, the commercial one. Obviously, we won't get there, but we try to give the same uh, flow that is available with commercial simulators also, commercial tools also with uh, these technologies. So thank you, and uh, I'm here to answer your question. Thank you, Umberto, for your talk. Uh, no applause also for you, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, I'm oh, checking. Very sad. <laughs> there are no raised hands, so I guess I'm asking you a question. Come on, guys, don't be uh, shy. <laughs> what are the open issues or the new features that you want to include with the work from uh, new ah. people? Okay, uh, there's uh, actually, uh, you've seen the Going back here, you have seen this uh, the simulation inside Topolinano. Actually, now we are talking of a, a logical simulation, but uh, I've developed uh, also a physical simulator that needs to be um, integrated inside the tool structure. That is one of the first uh, first work that we need to, to do. And as I said before, for example, we uh, there's the possibility to introduce the perpendicular magnetic logic inside the Topolino flow. So in order to be able to perform uh, uh, automatic layout also with the technology that at the moment is not supported. And then uh, we would like to uh, address new technology. So I've already talked about the possibility to use uh, molecular technology inside MACAD, but uh, let's say that the field couple nanocomputing principle is uh, is expanding and there's a lot of different technologies and uh, and we want to address let's say more more that we can uh, more with that we can 